In this video, we'll travel down memory lane and look at legacy Skyhawk controllers and how they integrate with Blue Pill. So, you know Blue Pill, this is the Blue Pill server, and this device is wonderful for connecting any Skyhawk controller into a modular fashion or just utilize the latest and greatest software features that we have added for device control. You can actually do the same with any Blue Pill panel. So, the modern panels we are selling today are also able to act as the host system for connecting older Unisketch controllers. But the Blue Pill is the one that you will get if you have Unisketch controllers and you don't want to own a Blue Pill controller, then you can just get that one and that will be the server for you. So the first device we'll be looking at is this E21 TVS, which is a classic. We sold a lot of those back in the days. And you see, it's it's a sweet little device here. It has um, monocolor buttons, red and green and uh, amber colored buttons. It was designed to control ATEM and VMIX. It has a little fader here and so on. But this device is a Unisketch device. And we can then use the raw panel protocol to connect it to Blue Pill. So let me show you how that would work. Basically, it is current. We'll look at the configuration of the device itself and what it takes to get it into a mode so that you can discover it with Reactor. But basically, when you are in Reactor, like you see this web UI right now, this is the, the web UI of the Blue Pill server. Okay. So here, we'll just click Add Panel. It by default will go to the Discover Panels tab, or you will click it. And then you can basically see all the raw panel compliant devices on the network. So there's a bunch of them. And honestly, many of these are the other devices on the table next to me. But this one, the E21 TVS, that's the one that I have right here. Ah, I should be careful. This Ethernet cable is easily um, falling out of the unit. So I'll basically just click this, this button here. And now it's going to take a little while before it gets connected. All right, it already booted, perfect. So if we go into configuration, you'll see that it is reading out the topology of the panel and presenting it into Reactor. Actually, Reactor doesn't know this panel, but this panel is, or the raw panel protocol is so clever that the protocol itself will tell Reactor how this device looks, that it has buttons that we can configure. So when we click on those, we can create behaviors on the um, configuration that we have and so on. We can do things for sliders and, and so on. So all these things are available coming out of the panel, even though this is like five to 10 years old. So uh, that's just one example, but I also have a, a um, USB micro cable attached to it. And if you have the Skahoy firmware updater open, you can use that to access the online configuration because to have it in raw panel mode, you need to basically set it up in uh, with the raw panel device core on it. So I'll just quickly show you what it takes. Well, sometimes there's something called blue pill ready. You just pick that one. You need to set up the IP address correctly because it has to be on the network and you need to enable the Unisketch raw panel device core like this. But I actually want to go into advanced because inside advanced, there are a few things that you need to notice. First of all, if you have any issues, open all configuration, make sure that each and every hardware component on the panel has this action set tied to remote hardware control, a hardware component. Those are mandatory. You have to have that for every hardware control, except you don't need it for, it's not on this panel, but we have some newer panels with Unisketch that has sections. Don't put it on sections, but put it on everything else. Secondly, very important, make sure it's in server mode. If it's not in server mode, Reactor doesn't know how to connect to it. Make sure it's blue pill ready. If it's not blue pill ready, encoders will be funky, buttons may be funky, and so on. So these two checkboxes must be set. The others, you know, that's only if you want to limit connectivity from certain IP addresses and so on. And then, of course, you have to have Unisketch raw panel enabled like this, and the IP address has to be right. If that is all true, then you can basically save the settings. You can go back here, and like you do with your Unisketch Skahoy panel, you press update configuration and firmware and update it. Now, let's look at some of the others. Um, we can also take the RCP Mini as an example. So let's go back to the blue pill here and search for this one. We will add a panel and somewhere on the network we'll find RCP Mini. Or won't we? Actually, I don't see it in this list. Ah, maybe we should simply, ha. This is one of the devices that does not have PoE. 
So we can search for a power cable and then just plug this in. In the meantime, we have some other devices like this little GPIO box here. This is called Micro GPIO. So if we click this one, it's in here in the configuration tool. And now I can click any of these GPI pins, outputs and inputs and assign behaviors to it. If we take this one as an example, we have a, ah, what is it called? Micro Smart V or H or something like that, which is just two buttons with smart switches. You see they have a little graphical display and it is this one. So it's the horizontal version. Once again, we have configuration that we can set here. We see the panel is uh, up here and maybe on the home screen. I'm not sure if this plays any role on this guy. No, it doesn't. In not, uh, let me see this one here. Yeah, okay. So it actually can identify itself just like we would be able to identify this guy with the little um, ah, now that is disconnected. Ah, once again, my PoE cable is exiting but if we go back to 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 this one the microsmart h then we can do that and i could now go on this one create an action and you'll see that it actually has a little dummy behavior shown inside of it again legacy panel remember this topology is not known to reactor it is taken out of the panel because it is raw panel compliant and therefore it tells reactor how it looks and what it can do and reactor is able to interact with it so this is really super pretty cool here we have a nice rack unit. This is actually a really cool rack unit. I almost wish that we would still be making these. So buttons, displays, um, encoders over here on the side. It's called C90R. And we will be able to also discover this on the network and have Reactor take this one in. It looks a little bit different than the other units that we um, normally uh, see inside the configuration tool. Let me just put this aside quickly. So. Um, because I want to navigate slightly. It's broken up like this, like in two parts. But once again, this is really how the panel looks inside the um, the, the topology that has been know, known for ages. If you go to uh, to coursecarhoy.com, then you'll find, uh, let me just exit this guy, and C90R, there we have it. So if we go in here and go to advanced, you'll see this is the topology that has been around for ages for this panel. And Reactor just reads it in and throws it out in your face for configuration and emulation. Once again, we can place a behavior on this one. And if we do so, then you'll see right there in this display, this is shown and um, it actually is also lighting up the button a little bit. You see the, the lighting of the button is happening right there. Nice. Uh, we now have the RCP Mini up and running because I decided to attach some power to it. And it means that we should be able to find this panel on the network. And there we have it, RCP Mini. And let's just click it. And there we go, RCP Mini in the middle of everything, but still we can work with this panel and um, we can identify it from the home screen here so that we see almost everything is lighting up and so on. And uh, I think the final one that I wanted to show you would be this one. It would also require some external power, but this is RCP V1, version one of the RCP. So let's just fire this one up as the final de device that we are showing in this collection of legacy Skyhoy panels. Now you see the RCP mini got disconnected. And while this one is booting, it is basically here. It says raw panel, waiting for raw panel right now. So let's just go find RCP. There we go. Select, get connected. Can we identify? Yes, we can. Thank you. And then go into the configuration and there you see. Now, um, let's, let's just quickly look at what we have here on the canvas of controllers. And the position of these is, um, they are obviously overlapping and so on. Generally, we have algorithms that try to position them in a smart way because what we have done now is to take all these panels in for one big configuration. I meant to show that we can actually connect to these legacy panels, which are not being sold anymore, but uh, uh, for some of you guys, you, you can still get value out of them with our amazing new Blue Pill platform and reactor here. So this is just to show you that 
this there's this uh, deep respect from our side to all the investment you guys have made and we honor it in this way this is how you tap into the new technology that we offer and all these are now also an example that you can have multiple panels connected to react so they have panel ids you see how they are automatically incremented as i connected multiple of these you can add configurations to them and it can all be run by a single blue pill. And if you wonder how can I make sure that they do not overlap each other is in um, the configuration, then basically you can edit the group here. And if you do that, at least theoretically, the graphical view should help you do this. And this is probably where we need a little bit more uh, time to spread it out. But at least I should be able to uh, move those two around. And I would hope that I could also save this uh, why does it say overlapping panels? Okay, now it doesn't anymore. And then if I go into the simulator, you can see that I now managed to move these panels around. So um, you can also construct a canvas with these legacy models that will uh, host all of them without overlapping. Thanks for watching this video and let us know if you have interesting projects uh, and need or need help and or if you have success with your legacy Unisketch panels and connecting them to Blue Pill.